Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today is a completely different video from what I'm used to but I've had loads of requests and questions about how I made this cardigan and I'll insert a clip of it from far away now. But yeah so basically I made this pattern up. It's not like a traditional crochet pattern. It's actually a bit more like a I guess you call dressmaking pattern. So I thought I'd show you my process and how I did it for all you guys asking on Facebook because I didn't know how else to explain how I made this. But hopefully it's easy enough for you guys to pick up and you can make your own and hopefully with some awesome colors as well. Right, let's jump straight into it. So for this project, I'm using just standard double knit wool um, with a 5.5 mil hook. Can't see that very well. Um, it does recommend with this wool using a 4 mil one, so obviously you can use a 4 mil if you want to, but I just wanted to try my new size hook. <laughs> so this is how I came up with it, this is like what I do in the evenings when I'm trying to design items that I want to crochet. I break it down into pieces and then hope that when they're all connected it looks like the drawing that I did at the top. Um, what I didn't do was I didn't do um, tapered sleeves in the end and I don't think it needs it. It works really well just with a block sleeve. Um, so you need one back panel, two front panels, and then two sleeves. And you can also do pockets as well. I just did like a normal square, but I actually didn't attach them in the end because I preferred it without. And then you've got the ribbing, I think it's called, and the cuffs. And then obviously to connect, well not to connect, to finish it off, you've got the buttonhole bit. And it goes up there, which is quite straightforward, and I'll show you how to do that nearer to the end. So these are the three pieces that you need. Um, these two are the two front panels and you connect them together and that's the back panel and then this is the sleeve panels. So I've made this one a little bit smaller because it's for my nan um, but obviously so you can change the pattern, trim it down if you want it smaller um, but I just knew how how much I wanted to take off of it basically. Um, so this is the back panel for my nanny's cardigan um, and I've made it shorter as well because she's a little bit shorter than me so again I've just taken a few inches off and it's yeah basically just to alter it depending on who's wearing it and what size so the these are the one that I'm wearing and then I've just gone from that as a base and then taken it down a size or two and yeah all I did was basically just cast on a load of stitches until I got to the edge of like how big I wanted it to be just keep going and I'll show you in a second how I do it but I just keep going adding different colors you can use whatever colors you want and then I just keep an eye on the length or the height of it. And then as soon as I feel like it's big enough, I stop adding colours, basically. So that's the um, back panel. And now I've also... Oops. It's actually that way. Um, because I'm going to do, like, the, the ribbing. I'm going to do the ribbing at the bottom yellow. So I thought it would be quite nice to have the, yellow, the um, it start from orange. But you can start it... At any colour, I've just started it red on this one, so completely up to you. So I, I just try and keep the uh, back panel and the front panels the same colours so that they connect up at the sides seamlessly, like this one. You see the front and the back panels there. And then in my little handy bag, because I take this wherever I go so I can crochet on the go, I am just currently doing this one. So you don't have to do both panels at the same time, but I just quite enjoy when I've got one colour out, I'll just do it on both of them. So I've started both panels and I'm just going to keep going until you get to yellow again. And as long as your tension is all the same, it should be the same size because you're doing the same amount of rows. And that's that. So once I've done the front panels, I'll then go on to the sleeves and it's basically the same thing again. Um, but yeah, just keep going the same until you've got that. And then in a minute, I'll show you, well, in a minute, maybe in a few days, once I've finished all these pieces, I'll show you how I sew them all together. Um, but it is quite a simple square on square on square, well, rectangle, 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 connect it all together, and then do a few finishing touches and add some buttons. So I think it's quite simple. Um, this is only like, well, this is the third cardigan I've done. I'll insert the first one, because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> And that is where I realised how important it is, not just to follow a pattern, but also to try it on and like go with your gut. Because I was thinking, wow, these sleeves are really long. But I was like, no, no, it's fine. I follow the pattern. And I've got really short arms compared to normal people. So always go with your gut. If you think something like a sleeve is going to be too long, try it on. And you can always do less than what they're doing in the pattern. <laughs> 
because it is supposed to fit you, not them. And I'm quite short compared to other people. <laughs> um, I've also done this, which it might not matter if you're doing different colours, but because I was doing a rainbow and there's all different shades of orange, green, blue, I've put them in order. And this took me a little while and I have moved a few of them around. I basically did some test pieces first, like this one. Um, and I thought, well, I don't like that red, that's too dark. Um, and there was too many of the same colour here, just slightly different, but they don't look that different. So I've sort of perfected the colours that I want in a little patch like this. And then this is the colours that I've come up with. Um, so I'd recommend having one of these if you've got quite a few colours and you can't remember the order of them. Um, and also testing it out first on a little, because I would have been really gutted if I'd done this massive and then realised that I didn't like that colour. So just a few things I've learned on my little journey. I've not been taught how to do this technically I've not been taught how to do a pattern or anything this is literally me making it up obviously my aunt taught me how to crochet but like I'm just sort of teaching myself as I go new skills and you know I never knew how to make buttonholes I never knew how to do like ribbon and that kind of thing you know if, even if your first one's not great just keep trying and you'll get used to it and you'll get into the hang of it each piece is basically exactly the same it's just different sizes so I'm going to show you the sleeve so I'm just going to do a slip knot and then I'm just going to chain a load of stitches um, the reason I don't count I mean I do count when I'm trying to half it but I just I just keep adding more stitches on until it reaches this size so obviously depending on your tension 10 stitches might be bigger or smaller so instead of doing it by stitches I just measure it so I just keep going until it is the right width. There you go so now you can see it is long enough for the sleeve. You can count the stitches if you wanted to but I just like to hold it up to the pattern and then I know that that is the width it needs to be for the sleeve and then I basically just keep going um, until I've got my patches. So I'll zoom in again and show you how I do the first um, the first colour and then I'll show you how I change colours. Um, but I mean apart from that this isn't a tutorial on how to crochet, this is just showing you how I do this pattern. So um, if you want in depth of how to crochet like the basics you should probably check another video out as well uh, and then you can use this pattern to create the cardigan that you want but I'm not the best at crochet which I've taught myself so I'm, I probably wouldn't make the best teacher so I don't want to confuse you and do a really in-depth video that isn't actually very good. I'd rather just show you the basics of how to make the cardigan and then if you need to learn how to crochet do that on a proper learning video if that makes sense. You could also do this pattern using say granny squares like I've got a jumper which I'll pop a picture up now and with that I did the same thing so I used the same pattern um, well, slightly different pattern, but the same method of, of creating a pattern. And I just made squares, put them all together in, in the right order. Connected all the squares together to create the pattern pieces, so like the rectangles, and then sewed the rectangles together. So it's exactly the same method. This is just to show you how to make the shape of the cardigan, basically. I hope that makes sense. It's very difficult to explain something that you've literally made up. <laughs> right, let's carry on with this and I'll show you how I do my stripes and then how I change colour. Now we've got to the end of the row, we are just going to chain one, turn it round, and you're going to go into both bits. So obviously the first one you could only go into one bit because it started it off and now you're going to go into both, I don't even know how you call it, that's why I don't do this learn from watching so you go into both bits pull it through and you go into the next stitch both sides pull it through you just do that for another two rows but I will meet you back when I have done my four rows in total and then I'll show you how I change colour okay I've come to the end of my fourth row and you know it's my fourth one because that's the start so you got one two three four and you end up back at this bit uh, that's just how I keep track of it anyway because I'm really bad and I struggle to count this way. I know a lot of people can count the rows but I just personally can't <laughs> or I get confused. Um, so now we've done this, we're not going to chain one at the end of this row like we have the others. We're just going to pull it like that, 
cut it off and then put it through. That's just casting off. Again, I'm not trained, so this is just how I cast off. It might be different for someone else. But that, as you can see, is the beginning of our sleeve. And what I'm gonna do is I always start on the same edge um, to try and keep all the tassels in the same side. Um, go in my hook, grab the wool, pull it through, and then I'm just going to tie a knot, a double knot, like this. Again, this is probably not the way you'd do it, but this is just how I found is the easiest way for me to start a new colour, uh, and it's the neatest way. There you go. So double knot there, and it's attached. Now just pop your ne your, your needle. I swear I, I might have called it a needle again. Uh, yeah, pop your hook in, pull it through, and then you start. And you just keep going and do the same as what you did for the first colour and then change colours whenever you want to change colours and that's just personally how I do it but obviously you can change colours however you want to um, and that is it and then you just keep doing that until it is the right size for the sleeve. Okay now I'm going to show you how to do the ribbing. Obviously some of it's for the cuffs and then the other parts for the bottom of the cardigan. So I'm going to show you this now. I haven't actually finished the patches yet but I just want to show you all the different pieces and how you make them and then I'll come back in a few days once I've made all the pieces and show you how to connect them all. So we're doing this at the moment which is actually super easy. I thought it was going to be quite difficult. Okay so first of all I've got a slip knot and now we're just going to chain 10. Okay so that's 10 and then I'm going to chain one more just so that we can turn it around without losing stitches. And then we're gonna go into one of the bits here, the same as the um, previous bits that I've showed you. Okay, so that's the first bit done, and then we're gonna chain one again. So every time you get to the um, end of a row, you're gonna chain one so that we don't make it smaller and smaller. And then you're gonna flip it round. And now um, in the first bit, so in the other bits, you used to go into both loops there. But instead we're going to go into the back loop each time now and this creates the ribbing so we're just going to go into the back bit so you've got it's really difficult to show you can you see so we've got one bit there one bit there we're going to go into the back one every time so the further in you get the easier it is because it's quite hard to hold on to the smallest bit um, at the beginning once you've got a substantial amount done it's easier to hold on to it okay chain one again and then turn it around and same again keep going to the back one there you go and that's what it comes up with like a little zigzaggy bit and it's a little bit stretchy like that okay guys so it's now a week later and i've done all of the pieces so as you can see we've got the back piece the two front pieces and then the arms and then all of the ribbing so for the cuffs and the edging at the bottom um i'm gonna turn this around in a second but i thought i'd put it like this so you can see all the pieces in the right way up so these are just obviously going to go on top and then that's the sleeves um but let me just flip them around now because we're going to sew them together okay now i have put them in the right order to sew um, first of all, I just want to express how important this bit is. So this is the opening for the cardigan. And I made sure that all of my joints for the stripes were on the same edge so that I could put them to the side so that the middle edge is nice and clean and it's a lot easier to finish the item that way. Um, I've also got the cuffs, which I've made half the size of the sleeve. So you should be able to put two stitches into one um, stitch on this and then it will create like a nice gathering. I didn't do that as well on my previous one, so this is just me trying, I think I made the cuffs too big last time, so I'm hoping that they'll come together really nicely on this one, but obviously you'll probably know more about that than I do. This is just me trying to improve on my previous one. Um, so now I'm going to sew this edge here, and then I'll come back to you with the next bit of sewing. So I've been using, I think they're called stitch markers, these things, um, just to connect the pattern pieces together on the floor laid out like this because it's a lot easier to see and then when I pick them up I know where to sew or crochet. Um, yeah, that's just something I found really helpful. That might be something a lot of people do but I have no idea. They just came in a kit that I bought and I found them really helpful. So I just thought I'd let you know in case that is something you might learn from. <laughs> I'm now gonna crochet the pieces together. 
I'm just using yellow because it's my favourite colour and also I have loads of balls of yellow yarn um, so I thought I'd use yellow as the sort of feature piece like can you see in the cuffs um, but obviously you can use whatever colour you want if you have like a specific colour that most of this was you can try and hide the stitching uh, it won't be that obvious but because you can see it sometimes I keep it to the same colour as the cuffs but obviously it's all personal preference with this so now I'm just going to remove my first little marker and we're literally just going to crochet it together it's the easiest method I've found and the quickest I have sewed it together once um well a different I think it was a different cardigan um but I found it wasn't as easy wasn't as quick and um it was a lot easier for it to come apart uh when you wear it so now yeah as, as I said I'm literally just going to crochet it together so one stitch for one stitch. Okay, so now you can see I've crocheted these bits together. So this is wrong side up and you wanna make sure that you keep it all wrong side up when you lay it back down. So now we're gonna crochet um, this bit and this bit together. I have pinned them already and that shouldn't take two minutes. So now I'm gonna crochet this together. Uh, but one thing that I will say that is important that I forgot on the last one, it took me absolutely ages to finish it, was just to pull these tassels to the wrong side so make sure that you've got the wrong side up like I said earlier that you're connecting it so it's wrong side wrong side and then just pull the tassels to the wrong side so that they're not in the finished area because then you're just gonna have to go through and like hook them back through which is fine like it will work uh, but it might just take a long time and just be a bit awkward all out and then I'm gonna crochet like um like I did for the last bit Okay, now I've crocheted this bit and this bit, and also obviously these bits, all I'm going to do is bring it together like that, and you can start to see the shape of the cardigan. There you go, so it's still inside out, and we're just going to crochet along the sleeve and then down, and then along the sleeve again and then down. And there you are, as you can see I've now sewed all the sides together, so I've sewed down here, down here, and obviously at the top as well. Um, so now all we're going to do is add the little bottom bit, the edging, uh, what's it called, the ribbing I think, at the bottom and then the cuffs as well. There you go, you can see the cuffs, this is right side out, <laughs> yeah right side out now um, and you can see a little bit on the edge here, you can obviously see the yellow, that's why I keep it all the same as this, but obviously if you wanted to you could be more clever and try and hide it, but personally I don't mind. Um, if you just make it into a bit of a feature. And I also like that people can see how I put it together. Right, I think that's me done for the day. In the morning, I'm gonna show you how I do the um, edging here with the buttonholes and the buttons and everything. But yeah, so I'll see you in the morning when I'm more awake because trying to do the buttonholes, I just don't have the energy right now. I need to go to sleep. Guys, it is now the next morning and I have laid this out. So obviously you can have as few or as many buttons as you want. I think I'm gonna go with four because uh, you don't necessarily have to do the top one up, but I think it will just look nice and more in proportion, I think. But I may change that, I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like an edging or a lining here, and all you do is single crochet all the way around, chain one, single crochet again all the way around, and then chain one, single crochet, so that's three now. And on row four, you can go all the way up on this side like normal, and then when you get down to the first one, you're going to leave a gap of two stitches, chain three, and then go into the next, into the third one. I'll show you all this in a second. And you're just gonna do that for all the buttons from where you want them to be, and they'll be marked. And you're gonna chain one at the end of this, go all the way back round with row five, chain one, row six, and then that's done. And then you're just gonna cast off, and that is your buttonholes. What I would say is when you do your first buttonhole, just double check. I mean, I know because I've done it before that these buttons fit this size but it depends how big your buttons are if they're smaller you'll need to maybe just chain one or two um, and if they're bigger you might need to chain a few more for the buttonholes but yeah just test them as soon as you've done the first one test that it fits and then once you know how many you do you just do the same for all the buttons so i'm now on row four and i'm going to do the buttonholes so when you hold it up obviously right side out just make sure that the buttons are going on the left I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I think that 
in England, I think that's normal. I could be wrong. I could very well be wrong. So I've chained one and we're just going to turn it around and keep going. And obviously we've got our buttonholes going to be about here. So I'm just going to single crochet up to where the buttonhole is going to go. Um, so you can see that this is where the button's going to go. Chain three. Okay, so I've chained three and then I'm going to go one, two, and then into the third, into the third hole there. Can you see? That's the buttonhole. And we're just going to continue single crocheting until you get to the next buttonhole. Um, but before that, now I've attached it. Uh, can you see? So you're just going to grab one of your buttons and just make sure that it goes through. Okay. There we go. I mean, I knew it would because I've done this before. But yeah, if you've got different size buttons, and just make sure that the buttonholes are the right size for your button. So now we're just going to single crochet. Okay, now we're at the next button. We're just going to chain three again. And then skip two, so one, two, and then go into the third stitch there. So you've got your hole. Once you've done all the buttonholes, just continue single crocheting. Turn it around and then I will be back with you to show you how to do the fifth row. Right, I'm now on row five and I've just got to my first buttonhole. So I'm just going to show you how I do this bit because you don't want to just go in here. You want to sort of go in half a stitch, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to single crochet. Okay, in. So I'm just going to go in this one. And then we've got the chain three, so we're just going to go in half of it. It's very difficult to show you. I'm like half in. <laughs> this is really difficult to explain, uh, which is why I wanted to show you how I make this instead of just write a pattern because I don't know how to write a pattern. And then in half a stitch again. And then there you go. I hope that makes sense. Um, that's, yeah, that's how I do it. So now we're just going to continue all the way down uh, with all the rest of the buttonholes and then we're going to do another normal row of single crochet and that is it and then I'll come back to you and show you it before we put the buttons on. There we go, so now you can see we've got the buttonholes. And all I'm going to do is use one of these needles that I got with my crochet kit and just use the same yarn and sew them on. So I'll show you that, but quite straightforward I'm sure. If you're doing this, you probably know how to sew a button on. And there you have it, one finished crocheted cardigan in just about a week. And that is in my spare time, obviously not all day, every day. <laughs> that is after work. So let me just do some close-ups. See the sleeves and the buttons. Okay, there you have it. I've got a little bit of tidying up to do with some of the threads underneath, but apart from that, it's pretty much done. And I'm really happy. So I've changed the pattern slightly. I've shortened the top. Obviously you can have it longer or shorter, um, but my Nan wanted it a bit shorter. So I've shortened it. And because of that, I'd probably not do this button next time, just because I don't think it's, she might like it. so you can have you can have all the buttons done up and I'm sure my nan would like it but possibly for me I'd probably just wear it like that so I wouldn't need to do you could probably get away with doing three buttons but yeah that is the finished article and I'm really happy I think I'm going to use this pattern in the future just because the fits a little bit better a little bit more flattering um and yeah just less baggy more fitting but yeah oh, I'm so happy with it I think it looks awesome and it took me a week which I think is insane. Considering the last one took me three weeks, this was a massive improvement. I think now I knew what I was doing. It made the process a lot quicker. So yeah, I'm just gonna 
tidy all this up and then gonna give it to my nan. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and found it helpful. Let me know if you make this and follow me on my crochet Instagram if you want pictures of that. I literally, it's a secret Instagram I haven't told anyone about. This is the first time I've ever mentioned it to anyone other than my friend Liv. <laughs> and maybe my boyfriend knows. I don't know. But yeah, if you want to follow me on there, I'd love to follow you guys and tag me if you make this cardigan. Because uh, like I said, I completely made it up and I'm looking forward to hopefully bringing you more patterns. I say patterns. This isn't, I don't think this is how you usually do a crochet pattern, but for me it works and I find it really easy to follow and not have to think about too much because you're just holding it up to a piece of paper. But yeah, let me know down below what you think and tag me on Instagram if you make this cardigan. I'm honestly so happy and literally everyone wants one now so I'm about to make about 15 more. <laughs> Wish me luck. Right, I'll see you guys in the next video.